Founded on the principle of expanding the conversation around beauty and business, I was tired of listening to basic, shallow advice and raw, raw, hustle hard motivation that I started this podcast for those seeking to create something much more meaningful with their lives without having to sacrifice what felt right for them. A bit of a rebel, I don't do business like most people and it served me well. So if you're a bit of a rule breaker yourself, seeking for a place to go deep without judgment and bridge a bit of the woo with the work, then you're in the right place. After 25 years of being a serial entrepreneur, I now know that the level of financial success you have is in direct proportion to the level of your own personal growth. So without further ado, welcome to the Beauty Expanded Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another Beauty Expanded Podcast. I am your hostess with the mostest, Jade Hernandez, and I am so glad that you're here taking a moment out of your busy day to spend some time with me. I cannot believe it is September to think that we are on the final legs of our year, the last quarter of the year. It really begins to, at least I feel like during this time, really becomes a bit unsettling when you think about all the goals that you set out for yourself January of this year. And as the year begins to close up, which I feel like the holidays make it speed X by like 10 times. It can really become a bit unsettling and take you away from enjoying the holidays and enjoying this time to rejuvenate and to reflect about the year, spend time with your family, quality time with your friends. But more importantly, I think there comes this point and a position in the entrepreneurial road where as the year begins to unfold and end is we can begin to start comparing ourselves. And remember, comparison is the thief of joy. And a lot of us can find ourselves not only comparing ourselves to others, but also comparing ourselves to our own goals that we set out January of this year and how we came in guns blazing. This is going to be the year. This is where I'm going to accomplish X, Y, and Z. And then as the year begins to unfold and then it ends, you can start comparing your reality to where you thought you were going to be. And the problem with this is that it takes away the joy in what we have accomplished so far because a lot of us may not be close to what we where we thought we were going to be and a lot of us may not have accomplished all of our goals but i promise you that through this year you have accomplished something more than one thing i can guarantee it i would bet money on And we tend to forget everything that we have accomplished and the things that we've learned and the lessons that we've taken that are going to far outweigh the monetary goal that we had at the end of the year. And what happens is we look at these lofty goals that we have, and then we can begin to compare our current reality. And it can really take away from the significance of your own personal growth. And as you guys know, the more that you grow, the more that your business will grow too. And there's a ton of value in the lessons that we've learned this year and the things that we have accomplished because they begin to carve out the habits that are going to truly make us closer and more successful in accomplishing our lofty goal that we set out earlier in the year. So don't let that comparison steal everything that you've accomplished so far and the lessons that you've learned because you are much wiser and I would say more successful than you were January of this year. So that's just a little side note that I wanted to offer in in the intro of this episode, but that's not what this episode's going to be about. I really wanted to share in this episode, as we are nearing the end of the year, as I reflect on what has happened to my business this year and how have I grown as a person and what's really changed in me as an entrepreneur, business owner, a mother, wife, this year. And a lot of the key things that have really made this year much more enjoyable for me. And that in itself is success. Yes, I may not have necessarily made my financial goal this year, 
but I didn't lose anything in not meeting that goal. If anything, this year has been probably one of the most enjoyable entrepreneurial work years for me. And a lot of that is because I began investing the growth of my business and people that I really admire and were drawn to. And these people helped give me clarity, direction, and ownership in my own expertise and really helped carve me to be, to feel more successful in my business. And I don't want to gatekeep. And so this episode is really dedicated to my secret weapons. I consider them my secret weapon because these are the people that you don't see on social media in the sense of like when you're looking at my reels or you're looking at my website, you're listening to this podcast. These are the people behind the scenes that have really helped catapult my business and make it enjoyable, even in an unstable economy. And so the first person I really want to share with you, and some of them have been on this podcast. So we will include in the show notes their episodes if you want to dive further into who they are. But the first person that I want to mention is Elizabeth from the District of Beauty. So we coin her as the messaging queen because she just knows her shit. It has been such a pleasure and a gift to connect with her, work with her, and honestly just grow a really great friendship with her. Like I jokingly call her my business bestie. And the reason why is because we share so much of the same common values but more so because we have both invested in a lot of the same business mentorships. And when that happens, you begin to kind of speak the same language because you've been in the same programs and you've invested in the same people that say a lot and that reflect back in the type of person that you are and what you value. But Elizabeth especially, so to kind of give you more pragmatic advice, so the reason why Elizabeth has been one of my secret weapons this year is because even though it may look like I am really good at social media and I love it, I actually don't. I despise social media, but I know it's a necessary evil in the sense that this is a platform that I, I can get my message out. This is a platform that can help me generate new leads, fill up our trainings, promote our services, and become visible. And that's super important. At the same time, even though I need it, doesn't necessarily mean I enjoy it. But just because I don't enjoy it doesn't mean that I won't do it. Enjoyment has nothing really to do about it because I know that I need it. Elizabeth has been such a huge help for me because she's really helped instill a spark of passion back into social media. And with her being an expert in messaging, she has a way with words. Like she is a real wordsmith in the sense of giving me a list of hooks and plug and plays of how I can caption my posts. What type of reels do I do? How do I title my reels? Everything that you more than likely hate doing every time you post that keeps you stuck. Maybe you can relate to this, but you gotta post a reel. And so you're getting your video all set up and then you're stumped for a good hour or two trying to figure out the perfect way to say something or what to say. And Elizabeth takes all of that guesswork and that struggle and pressure to figure out the perfect caption. She eliminates and eradicates all of that work through her program and through coaching with her. She has a coaching program, but I personally like to work with her one-on-one. And so that's what I've hired Elizabeth for is to help me figure out what to say, how to say it to the point where I can just copy and paste it, kind of give it my little flair, throw in some of our behind the scenes content and boom. She's my secret weapon because she's so good at words and producing effective messaging in my content to the point that people are bookmarking my posts. They're commenting, they're sharing it, they're finding it relevant and valuable. And that is aligned with me wanting to post intentionally. So I'm not the type of person that's going to just follow a rule of you got to post three or four times a day and I'm just going to just throw a bunch of shit out there that's not quality just to meet those numbers and quota. Because at that point, I feel like an employee to Instagram and I'm my own business owner and I got a lot of other things on my plate to then get enrolled to be an employee to a company that I didn't even know I signed up for. 
And so that's what I love about Elizabeth is her posts are intentional. Her ideas are creative and it's proven to be super effective because I will get DMs. I will get more people signed up on our wait list and things that I'm strategizing for. And that's able to come through through her messaging elements. So I would say by far, number one secret weapon this year is hiring Elizabeth to help me recreate our landing page for our training program and also help me outsource and delegate my social media posts, captions, and content. So that way it's much easier for me and I'm not spending hours trying to figure out what to say. And in fact, it's actually allowing me to show up more consistently on social media instead of like the one post that I was doing every two weeks because I just wasn't feeling inspired. So that in itself has made social media a lot more enjoyable for me. Not to say that I, I'm not gonna say I love it, but it has made the process a lot more enjoyable and doable. The second person I wanna share with you is Julie Chandler. So she is my business psychic and I love her. I met Julie through one of my mentorship masterminds last year. And the way that I like to utilize Julie is book a call with her quarterly. So every quarter I like to check in with her. And I call her my business psychic because that's her specialty is it's the best of both worlds. She's a psychic, but she also works with a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners. It's great because I'm always asking her questions about my business. Am I on the right path? What am I not seeing? I have this thing coming up. Are there any tips, any suggestions, anything that I'm missing? Um, I'm thinking about doing this. How does that resonate? And so I like to check in with her quarterly to kind of not only gauge how the next few months are going to go, but also to be more open about my blind spots. Like, what am I missing? Or, hey, I'm struggling with this. What do you see that I'm not seeing? And as I've mentioned before in the podcast, I'm not religious, but I am spiritual. And the reason why I'm not like I, I would coin myself religious is just because I, I'm not so into the indoctrination of religion. I, I value freedom and I instead believe and co-create with source, energy, angels, guides, all of those things. And so Julie, for me, resonates and aligns with that. But whether you call it God or whether you call it source, angels, to me, it, it makes no difference. I personally believe it's all of the same thing and I'll fully own that. I I know that Julie's not going to be for everyone that's listening to this, and that's okay. That's why we have business advisors of all sorts of degrees and, and ways of getting guidance. But Julie, for me, I really love her. She curses. She's straight to the point. She's very forward speaking, and that's what I love about her. And then, of course, she understands business, and she also has shares some of like the same values that I do and the fact that I met her through some of the mentorships that I met Elizabeth through as well. So it's a cool, very cool community that I'll share more in this episode. So anyways, Julie Chandler has been a great resource for me and just checking in because I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, it can feel very lonely, right? Like you're a solo entrepreneur, you're kind of doing things and winging things all on your own. So it's nice to tap into source or someone that can tap into source and just getting a, another dimension of advice when it comes to the energetics of your business and what you want to manifest in your goals. And I personally love that. I have more clarity. And every time I do, I feel so gung-ho about my business and the direction that I'm taking. So she would be also another secret weapon. And she's actually from the UK and we do our sessions. You can book online, super easy. And we do our sessions on Zoom and it's recorded. And again, I just get so much value from her. The third person I want to share is Tracy Goodwin. Tracy was also on our podcast, so we'll include her interview in our show notes. But she's a voice coach and a fascinating woman. She's been on TED Talks. Again, I met her through my past mentorships. And she is a pioneer when it comes to voice coaching. Because when you think of a voice coach, she's not your typical voice coach at all. She's not going to tell you to speed up your voice, lower it, anything like that. Like, no. The thing that makes Tracy so interesting is that she really dives into the psychology of the voice and what you're saying on a subconscious level and what your listener or your client 
or your audience or your followers are picking up subconsciously through your voice. And it is fascinating because essentially there's six, I think, or maybe seven voice masks that we all carry. And we created these voice masks of protection by the age of five years old. You can think about in your childhood, for example, what was told and modeled to you about using your voice? Were you brought up in a family that told you to be quiet, not loud? Or were you brought up into a family that was very opinionated and everything was either the right way or the wrong way? Or what was being taught to you about your voice and using your voice at that age? And what most of us do is whatever our scenario was, is we tend to adopt these protective voice masks. And there's like six layers. I think there's six, six layers to it that are covering your authentic voice. And the problem with using voice masks, and and a lot of times we're not even aware of what mask we're using. So there's like the people pleaser mask, there's the cheerleader voice mask is it's actually blocking you from truly connecting to your audience or your customers, which is also affecting your sales. And it's fascinating because Tracy is like a voice therapist. She will listen to you talk and then begin to ask you questions that will bring you to tears because it's something that you needed to heal within yourself. And she brings it up to light so you can let it go and you can move past it so that you can truly own your voice. And the voice, our voices are doors to our soul. Using your voice is standing for something. Using your voice is like in this podcast, it's the ability to inspire people and to motivate them and to help them grow or shift a perspective that's going to get them from being stuck to close to where they want to be. Our voices are so powerful, especially in an age where AI is taking over. And that can be a really scary place. And I think what people are most seeking, and I would even say craving, is connection. Even though we are more connected than ever before, we're also the loneliest. And so it's through Tracy's program, I have experienced and seen myself being able to attract ideal clients and students much faster. I've been able to close more leads. And the only thing that has shifted is me getting more grounded in my own voice and confidence. And that's Tracy's specialty is she begins to uncover these masks so that your true voice comes out so that you can be 110% authentic and grounded and confident in your own essence. And I think that is so cool. And so I actually finished her, gosh, I I think it was a 16 week coaching program, which was so good, worth every penny and more. If anything, I actually think she was my good luck charm because I miss those monthly coaching calls with her. Actually, they were weekly coaching calls because I kid you not, Our coaching calls would be on Tuesdays. Tuesdays is when I do my consults. And I would do my coaching call with Tracy and a small group of other entrepreneurs on Tuesdays. I would literally close 90 to 100% of all my leads that day. All because she really just instills so much confidence and ownership in who you are. She's very, very empowering. And I would highly, highly recommend you check out her podcast, which is called The Voice of Psychology. And she does free webinars all the time. She does coaching programs. She's definitely someone you have to follow, especially if you know this is the year that you need to step into your boldness and step into your power. And the fastest way you can do that is by using your voice. And so highly recommend her. I actually just signed up for her alumni program that she's launching because I was like, Tracy, I need you in my life. Unfortunately, sometimes you invest in coaching programs and they don't necessarily pan out exactly how you thought they were going to be. You invest in something and it wasn't the greatest experience or it, it just it fell flat. And I would say, especially with Tracy's program, it went beyond. It met my expectations and even more. A really, really fascinating person. And you can also check out her TED Talk as well. So her name's Tracy Goodwin. And again, we'll have her info in the show notes. Okay, so those are the three major secret weapons uh, to my success this year. 
and my sanity, should I mention. But let's say you, you're like, okay, Jade, this is amazing. I'm going to start following them. But maybe you're not in a place to invest in their coaching programs just yet. By the way, you really got to think about it as an investment because if, for example, Elizabeth's program, she just launched a beta program for like $1,200, which to me is a freaking steal because it, it literally is a six or $7,000 program. And I would know this because I have invested that much in programs before. But even in her beta launch that she just did, $1,200. For a lot of you guys, that's going to be one, or I'm sorry, that's going to be like maybe two to three clients that, that you're going to make back your investment, but you're going to make it back and so much more. And so when you invest in a coaching program, you really have to think about, and this is where people get it wrong, is they, when they look into a coaching program, they're more worried about what am I going to lose? This is going to cost me X amount of dollars. And you think of it as a loss. Anytime I invest in a coaching program, I always ask myself, what is there for me to gain if I invest in this program? And it is an investment. And that investment is not only the program and the things that I'm going to learn, but holy smokes, if I start doing things very differently, how much more is that going to produce for me? And so if I told you that investing in my program is going to attract an additional two to three clients a month, I mean, by then it's like you essentially pay nothing for this program. That's how I look at investing in programs is like, what is there for me to gain? And those things that I gain, I get to keep. Nobody can take those things away from me. Of course, it's going to multiply over the years and the months. That is absolutely going to produce not only a return on investment, but so much more than that. But regardless of where you are right now, I am going to share a couple of other ways that you can tap into my secret weapons without having to actually pay. As you guys know as well, one of my biggest business mentors is James Wedmore. I freaking love him. And he's a business mentor for online course creators and entrepreneurs. Now, do I have an online class? Yes, I've dabbled into webinars. I have my mentorship. We just launched our 3D nipple tattooing course. But I'm not like, I don't know, I, I guess, yes, I'm dab I've dabbled into it, but that's actually not where I get most of my value from James. Where I get most of my value from James is his coaching. He's just an incredible coach and he has a business that I'm like hashtag goals. He looks like he's having so much fun in his business. He's a multimillionaire. He has a really great way of bridging spirituality into business, which was really, really important to me. And he also has a podcast that's free that you can always tune into. It's called Mind Your Business. And I would highly recommend getting into his world. Not only does he have like mastermind retreats and mentorships that are obviously higher dollar, but he also has really incredible master classes that sometimes are like $97 or a couple hundred dollars. So I would highly suggest getting into his world, following him on Instagram, but also just listening to his podcast because I gain so much value just by listening to his episodes. And he has a really great way of explaining things that just stick. And it's always positive. It's always enlightening and it's always inspiring. So if you ever wake up feeling kind of like blah, definitely tune in to one of his podcasts and I guarantee your energy and your mood is going to shift in the best way possible. So I highly recommend James Wedmore. That is also who connected me to Tracy Goodwin, who also in a roundabout way connected me to Elizabeth as well and Julie. So through his community in itself, I have gained back my investment in the sense of like gotten a ton of support and clarity for my business's growth. Okay, the other thing I wanted to share is this year, I discovered audiobooks, which is so crazy to think about because I listen to podcasts all the time, but why did I not listen to audiobooks, which has been a game changer for me because now it's like a podcast and I get to read books in a way. So the one book that this year blew my freaking mind was the audiobook 10X is Easier Than 2X by Dan Sullivan. Really fascinating book. I was craving it. Like every morning I would be so eager to tune into it as I was doing my makeup and getting ready. But 10X is Easier Than 2X is basically a book about how most entrepreneurs, when they're thinking about their goals, are always thinking about like, how do I double my revenue? How do I double my clients? 
What they don't realize is that when you think 2x, right, how to 2x my business, is you forget that it's also going to require you to do twice the amount of work. And instead, what this book talks about is to do away with the 2x goals and to go actually after your 10x goals. And that's how you'll quantum leap your business. That's how James Wedmar went from 2 million to, I think, 8 million in one year. That's a quantum leap. Most people will go from 2 million to maybe 3 million in a year, three and a half, four million. But to go from 2 million to 8 million in just one year, 365 days is unheard of. So that's what we call a quantum leap. So this 10, or 10x book, I'm going to call it the 10x book, is all about how you do that. And a lot of it is thinking of things very differently because in a lot of ways, when you think about 10X in your business, even if you don't meet your 10X goal, let's say you falter and you only like 5X your business. Well, 5X is still way more than 2X. And what you come to find is when you start actually going after your 10X goals, because the only way to quantum leap your business is by letting go a shit ton of your business, like the way that you've been doing things, which again is going to blow your mind because it's a complete mental shift of how to think about business because it goes against the grain of everything we've been taught. But the only way that you can quantum leap your business or 10X your, 10x your business is you literally have to let go of all the 2X stuff. And you got to let go in order to bring in. And it's an interesting philosophy and concept but to me, it just makes a lot of sense because even again, if I don't 10X my business, well, shit, at least if I even 4X my business, that's way better than grinding it out and doing twice the amount of work to make twice the amount of the revenue. So that's what this book breaks down. And it's also the catalyst of why this year, I believe is one of the reasons why it's been the most enjoyable for me is because I didn't run myself to burnout, which means that like in the past couple of years, I have always had a burnout, like really bad burnout. But this year, I really took hold of that and was really mindful and aware of that. And part of that through this book, when I was listening to it was just, again, perspective shifting the way in which I do business and really outsourcing the hell out of everything that does not light me up in my business. And I've gotten really good at it. And I, if anything, it's been addicting. Like, what else can I outsource? That's how I came in contact with Elizabeth. Social media is not lighting me up, but I know that it's something that I need. And so you're the person to do it with me. Are you game? It wasn't even an offer that she had on the table, but she was game. And so I hired her to do that. And it's worth it because now I'm not stressing. I'm not hating social media. I'm not hating the fact that I need to do this in my business. I don't feel obligated. There's a lot more ease and flow. Also with the 10X goal is getting really clear on how I want my business to look. And this is the year, actually this past quarter, I have starting in September this month, actually, I pulled back my schedule by a lot. And that's the part of letting the 2x go. I've pulled back my schedule a lot in regards to client services. And so I am taking on less clients. In fact, I know this is going to sound a little crazy. I actually asked our digital advertiser to stop doing ads for client services. I'm reshifting my focus into where I really want to be, where I want my attention and my energy and my resources, where I want to fill that cup. And it's in training. It's in my mentorship. It's really supporting my students and my future students and getting this 3D nibble tattoo course in the future out there as well. And so in order for me to do that, the only way I can do that at the optimal standard and level is I got to let go of the things that keep me busy on the day to day, which is client services. And not to say that I'm like completely done with client services, but I really pulled back on the volume that I do and intentionally carving out empty days in my schedule to really focus on my mentorship and how can I build this out so that I really can help support new artists in growing a profitable and successful paramedical tattoo business and all these other things that we have in line. And that has felt really good. And that's what gives me energy right now. And so I'm running with it. And then the cool thing is, is that I get to be a lot more selective in the clients that I want to take on. And with zero attachment in the sense of I can increase my rates because I'm not dependent on taking clients on to bring revenue into my, my business. 
So that feels a lot more freeing. That feels a lot more empowering. And I get to be more selective, which means that when I am in session with my clients, it's going to be really enjoyable versus being booked out day in, day out, knowing that my attention and my energy really wants to be in training and supporting my students. But I'm stuck doing a ton of sessions every day of the week. And that's not good for my mental state. It's not good for my passion, my spark. But also when you don't have space in your schedule, it blocks creativity from happening. If you're so busy with day in and day out stuff, there's no way that you have room for creative expression and creativity. Creativity needs space to grow and breathe. And that's what I'm creating for the next quarter of this year or the end of quarter. So I wanted to share those secret weapons to you guys because I think that wherever you are in your business, I can say having a little bit more inspiration, having some perspective shifts, some mindset coaching is going to really serve you well in the next couple of months. And these are people, again, that you're not gonna necessarily see on my social media, but they're everywhere in my business because everything I've created today and for the next couple of months is literally through the support and expertism of their gifts. And it's co-creating with their passion, which helps fuel my passion. So with that being said, I should also mention to you guys, if you haven't heard, we are in the process of creating a 3D nipple tattooing training program, which is very, very exciting, but it is not there yet. So first things first is I'm only focusing on part one, which is teaching you how to draw hyper-realistic 3D nipple tattoos on paper first. Because as my mentor once told me, if you can't draw it on paper, you can't tattoo it in the skin. And it's so true. So we already launched our beta program. It's a six-week drawing course that's online. Every Saturday we meet for two hours. I partnered up with an incredible art educator from the UK. She's actually from Scotland. Uh, Her name is Hilda and she's a self-taught art educator and teacher. And I love her realism. Interestingly enough, she teaches artists, like new artists, how to draw. And they do like animals and all that stuff. And I was like, did you ever think that you would ever be drawing nipples? Did you ever think like when you got into teaching and you started creating your programs and stuff like that, that like one day someone was going to reach out to you and be like, so what do you think about nipples? So I'm really, really excited to partner up with her. Our doors are closed for that class. So we already have a really great group of students. I think there's like 13, 13 students that we're going to be doing the first rendition of for the next six weeks. And there's just like a ton of bonuses with that. So not only is Hilda teaching us every two hours, every Saturday for six weeks, but she's also doing an office hour in the middle of the week. So that way, if you don't make it live to the class or you're struggling or you just want some more, just your teacher to kind of look over your work, give some input, she's generously offering an extra hour a week where you can meet her online and have her look at your work or get more of her attention and her autism. So I'm super excited about that. In the meantime, if you did miss it, we're setting up our priority wait list. And so you can sign up to be on our wait list for the second rendition of it. It will no longer be a beta program. It'll be kind of like the second rendition of our training program. And so if you sign up to be on our wait list, you'll get information when we begin to start promoting that, all the details, the price, all of that stuff will all be in those future emails. Now, this is part one of my training program. So in the near future, either end of this year or definitely first of next year, I will be launching a in-person practical application of our 3D tattooing mentorship training program, but it will come with some prerequisites because when you're working on mastectomy incisions and trauma sites, it's a whole nother breed of compromised skin. And so I cannot ethically allow someone to learn this without any tattooing experience. It's just the hardest type of skin to learn how to tattoo. So the prerequisite, I'm still kind of figuring out what that looks like, but I do know for a fact that you have to have done our drawing program, like without a doubt, because my my priority is always the 
the patients and the clients that you're going to be serving. And it's a very vulnerable population. So I cannot have you create shitty nipples out there that don't look realistic. I mean, to be fully blunt, I just cannot have that be done. It is being done in this industry right now. And it's really heartbreaking because these women are not advocating for themselves. They're not saying anything. And yet they're very, very unhappy with their areolas. And this is their body that we're talking about. And it's oftentimes the last step of the process of putting them back together and feeling normal again. And that could only happen if they have a nipple complex that looks hyper-realistic. And so a lot of artists out there are just not diving into the hyper-realism part of it. And it shows because nipples are looking like pepperonis. They're looking like planets, Saturns. They're looking cartoonish and it's not, not good. So I cannot put my name behind that. And so if in the future, when we do launch our in-person practical application, it will require you to have done our drawing course. And it will also require you to have a year or maybe even two years of machine experience. So it's something that I'm still kind of figuring out. More information will be shared once that comes into fruition. But I do know I'm very clear that it, it can't be you can't learn how to do this right if you've never picked up a tattoo pin before. If this is something that you know you want to do and you're very clear on that, then I would suggest you take our paramedical stretch mark and scar camouflage course because that's going to give you a really great foundation to set you up for your first year prerequisite of learning how to use a machine and tattooing. And even if it's like a two-year prerequisite before you can take my 3D areola. Again, you're going to like be light years away from most people who have trained with others because we are that much in depth with our training. So if it is something that you do know that you want to do in the future, I would highly suggest you take our 3D nipple drawing class. See if you even like drawing nipples, one. Build up those drawing skills and also consider taking our stretch mark and scar camouflage course because stretch marks and scars are compromised skin and that's going to really set you up to be super successful on working with clients clients who have had a mastectomy. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. The other thing I want to share is as the year kind of closes up, there's going to be a couple of things that are going to change. I am actually in the process of partnering because I love Elizabeth so much. I'm actually in the process of partnering up with her in this podcast and doing it together with her, which I think is really exciting because I love the engagement. Like I love it when you guys send me questions and messages on Instagram and stuff like that. So I just think it'll be a fresh perspective. She obviously knows her shit. She's in our industry. She knows all the struggles that you guys are going through as new entrepreneurs in the beauty industry. I don't know how that's all going to unfold, but that is in the works and that will probably be something that will launch before the end of the year. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you so much and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for listening. If you loved this episode, please share it with a friend. Even a simple repost on your stories or leaving us a review helps others as well on this entrepreneurial journey. And if you're someone looking into starting an exciting career in paramedical tattooing, your best bet is to check out our YouTube channel where we share industry insights on what it's really like to tattoo and help people transform their lives for a living. For beauty entrepreneurs, whether you're new or experienced, I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching calls where we dive deep into your business to help you grow and scale it on your terms. I truly believe every problem has a solution, and the very definition of being an entrepreneur is being a problem solver. But sometimes it takes another person's perspective to help you move past a block, especially when you're in the thick of it. I want to see you win, and if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one support from me, you can find details on our site to book a call. You don't need to do this alone. Okay, Vons, thanks so much for your time, and have an incredible day.